Hello, and welcome to Glasgow Queen Street on the Edinburgh to Glasgow Queen Street add-on route or the Scott Rail Express add-on route for Train Sim World 3. I've just driven this uh, train in from Alloa, that's one of my million miles away from the stop blocks. First time I've driven it on the stopping service. It's a bit dark as well, so new to the route and all that. Uh, so what I thought I'd do was, while well, there was a train stood in here for what looks like 26 minutes, I'd have a little run run through the Class 385 in general, just to show you what what how to get it, the safety systems are, and how to get it all set up, how to control the doors and various other aspects of it. I'm still learning bits myself, so I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I have learned quite a bit already. Uh, so the 385, there's two types of 385s that come with the route. There's the 385 stroke zero, that is the free car variant, which you see more on the Edinburgh Dunblane services. And there's a 384 stroke one, which you see more at the Glasgow end of the route, and also coupled up with uh, another one to form the main intercity services, well, Scott Rail Express services between Edinburgh and Glasgow. As you can see, this example here is 385111, which is a four car which I've just brought in on an Alloa service which you take over from at Croy. Uh, class 385, as, as it denotes by the Class 300 series, is uh, a purely electric train using 25k AC overheads. As you can see, pantography is there. Um, it's it, also, you can probably tell by the body, it's very loosely based on the. Uh, um, the um, it's an Attache, so it's based on the Attache body shells that you see, like with the Azumas, uh, etc. It's quite, got quite a long body shape. So, I mean, I could set that one up and get that gone. It goes at 7.30, but I thought, with us having a bit of time, I'd have a play around with this. So, here's the train. I've brought it in. I changed the lights at the other end. Oh, the lights have gone out. Interesting. Uh, on that one. So, Let's just have a quick look at the train. That, that, obviously, as you can see in the opposite platform, this another 385 uh, straight one. I assume that's 385121, uh, coupled up with another one to form an eight car. So let's have a quick look around the train. As you can see, it's got a gangway so that you can couple up and walk through the train. They use, I think they use down the couplings, uh, similar to other trains of, of its ilk. Um, let's just have a quick look in the train. Obviously, it's got uh, electrically operated doors. There we go, as we go inside, I think it's pretty much a, it's very much a sort of uh, in a regional, s regional set up with the two plus two seats, look at that, uh, see that there, the uh, nice pictures there to, prior to um, st denote that that's a priority seat, the rest of them get the cell tire X's on, so that's, that's clever, there's also bike space on these as well, which is donated there by the, if you can just make out the bike sat at the front to say that this vehicle has bike storage. We'll see, show that in a second. A big thing that they have in Scotland, because a lot of people like using their bikes as they go out and about. Uh, luggage rack, a couple of tables there, posters, that's into the cab, we'll look at in a bit. There's a, a Scott Rail route map, which you can't really see very well. Uh, obviously, there's your safety posters for the train. Uh, well, for this vehicle and various other emergency bits and pieces. So there's quite a good attention to detail there. Uh, as you can see, there's your door controls and all that. It's got its own PIS, passenger information system, which obviously currently hasn't been changed. The hustler alarm's going off, so this these doors also close, I think. Or is that this train? Oh, no. It might be that train. Oh, no. I thought they might have auto shut, but they don't. So ignore me. The saloon lighting is off because the cab isn't keyed in. Not entirely sure why that would be. Uh, anyway, space saver toilet, which you can't go into, obviously. What would you? What would you? There'll be a cabinet there. It's obviously got some bits and pieces in. Um, and uh, obviously, we're in, this is the pantograph vehicle. You can tell by the slightly lowered. Has it got a slightly lowered ceiling? Yeah. 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 So that's the pantograph housing there. That's a pantograph vehicle, so more 2 plus 2 seating with tables, and uh, so yeah, very very much a sort of regional intercity sort of seating arrangement on this train. So generic one there, again you've got more 
cabinets there for electrical stuff, a bit of room there. Where's the bike space? He says there's a bike space there in that vehicle. But where'd you? Oh, there, there, there you go. Look, you put them there, look. So there you go. That's the, uh, the 7.30 going off to Glasgow. Uh, Edinburgh, sorry. We're in Glasgow. So, right, into the next vehicle. Another standard class vehicle there. Normal seating again. And then we are in the last vehicle with the driving end, which has got the universal toilet and universal space. It's always good to know, isn't it? And again, lots of room there for more universal um, for more uh, wheelchairs. These tables fold out and you've got sockets there. And as you can see, again, they've denoted those seats are for priority which uh, obviously shows you the different types of prices you can get. I'm sure people give them up. And as you can see, that is first class. And this is at the one end. Uh, I assume these trains don't turn around too much, but yeah, first class again is a two plus two, or sorry, two plus one, slightly wider alley. Uh, 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 oh, okay. What's she doing? Uh, yeah, so she's uh, not sat properly. Uh, slightly wider uh, oil way because the, the seats don't look that much wider than the ones in there. So they probably are a little bit. They're not as iron. They're more iron boardy, aren't they? The classic iron board, ironing board. Whereas these are look a little bit more comfortable. And again, yeah, another set there. Obviously, for the driver access there, there's only one seat on that bit. Oh, she sat. Oh, interesting. A lot more in first class. Okay, so we're in the cab, in the cab. But I'm not going to go into the cab yet. Let me just shut that door again. I want to show you a couple of things. Um, and then at right side. So, you know, I'll put the hood on. So if you just look, the only access to the cab doesn't appear to have anything obvious at all. So no matter where you highlight, it does not appear to be anywhere. It doesn't seem to hold like that you can look up. However, you can open this door with the T key. Yep. And then you close it. Do you close it with that one? Or do you close it with that one again? And you close it again with that one. So you can access it, but you've got to use the T key in that lock. So very, very realistic there. Likewise, when you get in the cab, if you need to shut and open the door, you press these buttons down here when it creates down to make it easier and again yeah so you have to use these control buttons to open and close the door obviously here's the guard stuff look so it won't work because we're not buzzed in i don't think we can activate the panel like you can on other trains so unfortunately we can't that's the buzzer so can't I can't release the doors because we're not we're not buzzed in. But the most important thing I want to show you for a drawing is this panel. This is your safety systems, and yes, there's quite a lot of them there. But I'll have a quick look talk through what they are. So a lot of them are already normal. Oh, I tell you what, I'll go to the other end because I'm going to set that one up obviously to drive out. So let me just uh, get down the other end. Getting a bit busy now. People, like, people getting a bit annoyed. Probably when they get on. It's February as well, so it's a bit cold. Sorry, I'm doing a tutorial. I'll have to wait. But the bill lights come on because this door's open. I'm gonna close that one a minute. Close that. The bill light should flash and then shut. Go off. There we go. Perfect. Right. So let's get into the cab, like I've just showed you. And I assume there must be similar controls. Yeah, there is in the darkness. Put me. Ah, there's my torch. No. There's all your. You don't really need to worry too much about all these. To be fair, because we shouldn't actually need them. I'm not going to turn the battery off because we need it on. Okay. 
and we'll go back about the cab in a minute. Let's just set all the doors up. Right, so that's how you get your cab set up ready. Second man side's got the usual controls. Reading light, emergency brake, the washer. I don't think it works. Any wipers? They're not working. You even charge your phone. Put your document in. Right, so let's get back to this, this end of the cab. So this is the how everything is defaulted when you first um, spawn into your train or when you find a train. So as you can see, a lot of things are isolated. These are the safety systems that are isolated automatically. It's really annoying because I really wish there was a setting where you could, when you spawn in, all your safety systems are already on. You just have to set, you just have to know, know that. There should be a setting in the main settings of the game that say safety systems on, you know, safety systems on or off when you spawn in. I'm really surprised that they haven't done that at this time. I'm not sure if it's hard to do or not, but that's a little bit of feedback from me, should anyone be listening. So, <clears throat> let's have a little talk through what we got. So we've got traction interlock, that says it all. So basically, what that means is, while the doors are open, for example, you should not be able to get traction interlock. So you should not be able to take power, because the doors should hold the brakes and cut off any traction, basically, hence traction interlock. If you isolate this, I would assume, you should be able to get interlock the doors open. So you don't want to do that. The DRA is a driver reminder appliance. That's currently on isolated. The DRA, you probably don't use a lot, but what it basically does, I'll show you, I'll briefly show you on the on the uh, desk. So the DRA is that there. And it, it's a reminder, basically. So what it does is, this again is, is oh, obviously it won't come on because I've, it's isolated at the moment. But basically, basically what that does is, when it's on, it should illuminate red. And if you try to take any power, you won't. And the main reason why you put that on is, let's say you stood at a red signal. Uh, okay. Or for any other reason. So I'm going to slip that to normal. Right. SDO, I would assume that's selective door operation. Don't think it's something that we use much at all on the route. So I'm not going to go too much into that. I would assume that on a normal 384 where you've got this, this allows you to selectively select the doors that you want to open. I, I'm, go, I'm not sure how it works on a 385. It probably is just one set or the other. Uh, AWS, automatic warning system, that speaks for itself. Uh, that's obviously the ramps that you go over when you're going along. The yellow ramps in the, uh, in the forefoot of the track um, denotes a noise and changes the sunflower on the desk. Um, you get a chime if it's a clear, a green signal, and you get a a I suppose what can only be described as a horn or a long steady noise, which you have to cancel using uh, the address button, and that would denote if you've got anything other than a green. Uh, also, for if you've got a speed reminder coming up or or speed restrictions and stuff like that. So I'm going to turn that on. As you, it's just a little bit there to say I've turned it on. Pascom says it all again. Obviously, Pascom means if someone pulls Pascom at work, if you're isolated, it won't. EB. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is, if I'm really honest. Uh, so I'll leave that one for a second. If anyone knows, drop a, drop a, drop a comment. I assume it potentially could have something to do with braking. Possibly the electric braking, the, resistant, the, the, the resistance. Because this does have... Um, rheostatic braking or electric braking where the, the traction motor is reversed as, as you put the brake on so it could be that you might be able to turn it off so use just um, friction brakes it could be that I'm guessing it's on anyway uh, vigilance so that's where every if you're going along with no controls are touched uh, every 60 seconds or so it should start to beep at you uh, and the driver has a pedal on the floor or can move uh, the handle which they press down to say, yeah, I'm still, basically is, you've not passed eight, you're still alive. Um, the TPWS AWS, again, that's so your train protection warning system and your AWS in full is on. TPWS is the grids in the middle of the forefoot to stop you from approaching signals too fast, going past signals at red, and speeding. So we'll turn that on. DSD, drivers, it's basically the uh, DSD pedal, which is the driver's device, safety device. So the drivers are supposed to hold that down as they're driving along, and then they 
when the vigilance goes off, they simply lift it and drop it down again to cancel the vigilance. So I'm going to turn that on. And I, I don't know, that's a blank one, I think. It doesn't say what it is. So, so I've got all them on. That's all the safety systems armed. Um, if you have a keyboard, when you sat in the actual um, seat itself, if you hold down shift and enter, your DST and vigilance will be armed automatically. However, you still have to manually turn on your TPWS and your AWS. Okay. So let's get to the desk. Let's get on the train. Uh, what have you got here? Emergency brake, your GSMR, uh, your sander, which you'd probably use, which is also X on the keyboard. Oh, oh I'm not sat in the desk. Come on, so I can't show you. Uh, door controls, door release, door open. I, I assume door and to give it to the guard. We should never use it. Your signal. And that's obviously the light to say that the doors are closed and you've got interlock, you can take power. Obviously, when that's not on, you can't take power. And there's your mimic um, panel for your lights, which are currently off. I'm going to turn them on. I'm not sure why we've got full and dimmed. I assume full is daylight and dim is nightlight. So I'm going to put full. Um, you've also got the option of being able to contact the signaler, but obviously we've got no reason to contact them. We're not stood at a red or asking for any permissions. Yeah, that's just that door. That's that. Okay, let's get in the driver's seat. Here I am. So I'm in the driver's seat. Let's. Oh, no, let me have a quick look at these sides as well. Sorry, apologies. That's the egress, which you should never have to use. Uh, brake gauge. So that's how much uh, brake gauge. That's how much air there is in the system. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this has got rheostatic braking, with regenerative braking. It's, it's basically, oh, and basically what that means is it reverses the power to the traction motors uh, when you brake, and the actual air brake, so the 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 brake that come that's in this system, actually doesn't come until below 15 miles an hour, I believe. Um, so what you might notice is if you put the brake on slightly at quite a high speed, it seems like nothing's happening and you kind of have to push it just a little bit more. But what you'll notice is as you start to slow down and you get below sort of 20, 50 mile an hour, all of a sudden the brakes do appear like they are kicking in a bit quicker. But it, so it is a bit of a fine art. It, it's very similar. The 485 has got similar things that the 485 and the Isle of White is a bit slower. But when you're doing mile an hour, it can be a bit disconcerting. We move on. Uh, controls you'll never need, HVAC. Uh, air conditioning, temperature control, you'll never need that and you can't use them. Wiper switch, obviously that makes switch for itself. Washer never uses. The mister obviously will never use. The pan control, so putting your pantograph on up and down. Again, we should never need to use it. Uh, reading light, should you need it? I think it will be out on the thing as well. You can't use it anyway, but it. VCB light, so that's when you go through neutral sections. VCB opens, VCB closes. Uh, the light goes on and goes off. When it's off, it means you won't be able to take any power momentarily. Uh, cab lights, obviously. And lighter. Must be a single light up there. Turn that off. And obviously your door controls again for the left-hand side of the train in this case. So let's get into the driving seat. And we'll get the quickly have a look at the TMS. There's not really much to this TMS. Um, now, for some reason, I spawned into this train earlier, so what's happened is basically is that it doesn't work properly. If you spawn on foot and get into a train, the, team, the TMS does work properly and the train formation does come all. So obviously in this case, uh, in this case, I can't really, you, you can't see that there's a full coach train, so it doesn't let you. But anyway, I'll quickly show you to get into. All you got to do is put four digits in, doesn't matter what. At the screen, press enter, oh, press, and then you log in. Okay, you got door selection, but obviously, I don't know, does it work? No, because I'm not keyed in. DAS, which just looks like it's a, the EB, ah, oh, EB, oh, emergency brake. That's what EB means, boys and girls, sorry. So the EB, so basically you can also the emergency brake. Why would you? But anyway, so yeah, that's your power gauge. So obviously that way is the brake. And this way is the power. <clears throat> Obviously, it says it's not cast because, again, like I say, when you spawn into the train, it doesn't seem to work. That's the head code of what it worked in. 
Uh, there's obviously the speed you go, the date time. Pretty easy, really. Oh, that show it's January. Interesting. Um, this is your basically your TPWS board. Obviously, it's not. We're not. Um, we're not uh, keyed in, so you can't see anything. But these are obviously these lights will come on and off. There's your AWS Sunflower, which goes black when you're on a clear signal and goes to yellow and black when you're on restrictive aspects. There's your wipers and various other lights and things that you won't really need. Desk lamp, should you want it. Oh, oh, oh. oh sorry, that's the controller. Right, let's uh, get keyed in. So you can key in manually by using that, or you can press down on your D-pad on the if you're using a controller. Put it into forward. That needs to lately got safe systems. Just cancel that by either pressing this button or or it's circle on the PS5. I can't remember what the equivalent Xbox is. It's Q on a keyboard. Let's do it again. Do it, do it manually this time. Bang. There you go. So yeah. Then there's your power back controller, which I'm just going to drop down to 23. Um. Need to reset the train, really. I don't know how you do that, to be honest. Uh, let me have a quick look. Um, let's open the doors now. If you've got a if you've got a joypad, you can use and with a direction button, you press the left to open the doors, or it's one on the keyboard, or if you want to do it practically, you should be able to do it using those buttons. Now I've keyed in, and there you go. Look, there's the door interlock light. Like she's saying, yep, the doors are open. That will go white when the doors are shut. So, what do we do with the trains? What's this? Uh -huh. Some announcing stuff you can do. I don't really see the point in this. Let's just announce that seat state sorted. If you see something that doesn't look right, speak to staff or text British Transport Police on 61016. We'll sort it. See it. See it. Uh, door codes. Volume. Yeah, there's not really a lot I can do with this, I don't think. Oh, that's F7. I've, that's because I've just used the keyboard. Apologies, I've, I've just pressed F7 and it's... Alawa, there you go. And that's changed that. that. So I don't know how you do that without... I don't know how you do it on the actual thing, on the actual TMS at the moment. I've not worked that out. Like I said, I've still not worked a lot of stuff out. As you can see, the if you look, look, the you can see the gauge move as you move the power brake control. The power brake control is a bit, a bit of a sticky one. You've got to get used to it a little bit. It needs a little bit of force. So you just got to be careful with it when you're doing it. It's not, it's not quite as the same as like your traditional power brake controllers. Speed on and so obviously, how's your fast you going? And the DRA has come on, which means if I try and take power now, it will not um, take power. So I have to, to turn that off before I go. I am going to take this train to Alaba. I have took the put the lights up, well not Alaba, to Croy, just so you can see me drive it and I'll talk you through it. Um, I just want to get everything set up really, because obviously the head code's wrong at the moment. It might change automatically. Uh, so yeah, there doesn't really seem to be much I can do in terms of changing the train's actual head code or anything like that. So no, and it's not showing the train, is it? So yeah, uh, that's unfortunately we'll have to learn a bit more about that. Um, Seven fifty, I assume, is when they want me to open the doors. Seven fifty one is when we depart. So I've only got a few more minutes. If you're happy to hang on, I'll uh, quickly run you through driving it. I've only done the route a couple of times and I normally drive without the hood but I'm possibly gonna I'm probably gonna leave it on um as I'm still learning the route and there's a few stops in between here and Croy which I'm still not hundred percent aware where they are and there's a few changes in speed although it goes up uh, as opposed to going down when you go and away from Glasgow. Um let's have a quick look at the train when I'm here. Yeah my lights are on. Oh Oh, what's happened there? Whoa, what's happened there? Huh? It's, happened. it's all shut itself off. 
You see that? Oh, the tra ah, it's changed the TMS automatically, though. Right. Okay, I'm back to normal now. Yeah, lights are on. Well, it doesn't say out of here anymore. But it, maybe it'll come on when. Hang on. Uh, F7. Goric, we miss bay logs. Paisley, need to walk. I could be all day, couldn't I? Carl says, Bishop's Big Lindsay, Croy, Falker, Polmont, Linlithgow, Edinburgh Park, A Market, Special, Night in Service, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Alawa. Poof, got there in the end. I think I can press F8 as well. Right, right. Sorry, all that fell in the bait. Right, I've just pressed the direction button just to get the door shut. You would normally get an R8 at a station like this. Got a green signal anyway, so I'm not going to press the buzzer. So let's get that power going. PCB off. And let's go. 20 mile an hour coming out of Queen Street. Oh, I've made that mistake, haven't I? Look, left my DRA on. So that's what happens when you leave DRA on. Just testing you. Yeah. Turn that off. And let's go. And you see the power there appear in the gauge. And we are off. So like I said, 20 mile an hour. This does accelerate quickly, so just be careful what you do. U for up, I'd assume. I'll just put that back to... It's a good climb coming out of Glasgow, pretty much all the way to Croy. We're only in a forecast, so it shouldn't take us long to clear that 50 board. power up now I think it goes 50 60 85 or 90 then 100 but we've got to stop at Bishop's Brig we're just on just over two miles so I've got to be a bit vigilant with that sorry I'm driving in the dark I'd set up to drive in the dark but it's always good to learn how to drive in the dark because then if you can learn to drive in the dark it helps when you're driving in the day the one thing that I'm a little bit frustrated about with this route oh, oh I'm going too fast. I think I'm going too fast. <clears throat> going too fast. Is um, like I say, it accelerates really well. Is the is the seemingly lack of more puff boards. Now more puff boards are the upside down triangle boards that remind you you have a reduction of speed. Oh, lovely! It's foggy. I, I knew having dynamic weather was a mistake. You can see that hill's really caught us there. So I want to power back up. So I'm driving in the fog at the moment and in the dark. Should be fun, shouldn't it? Sixty mile an hour. Bit. I, don't, I don't remember seeing the sixty mile an hour board. Yeah, and also I think some boards are missing as well. Right. keeping control of this train so nippy and I'm doing nearly 70 now that's how nippy the train is that's what I mean it's so unpredictable with the power I'm actually speeding at the moment <laughs> so even up the uphill it's quite powerful now whether that's realistic or not I don't know if I'm honest I really don't know got Bishop Brick coming in just on, over a mile and there's a 70, so I ain't gonna power up despite having this. Although there is restrictive aspects anyway. Yeah, you have really got to force the um, controller to do what you want it to do. I'm gonna just power off. Because I don't think there's no point in me going too quick because I'm just approaching it. Now, the braking, I'm gonna try and see if I can get the braking right here, so bear with me. Um, it is, if you put quite a bit of power in, so if I start putting the brake in now, bearing in mind it's foggy and I can't see anything, I think I've got 100% brake in now. Yeah, I have. So it does slow down quite quickly, look. 
even though I'm still a good distance away. But I just wanted to test the brakes so you could see what they're like. So you do come down. I mean, I wasn't going overly fast. But uh, we'll take a steady roll into Bishop's Brig. I'm at a red signal anyway, so it's always good to be steady. We don't want TPWS catching us out, do we? There we go. Let's put a bit more brake on. If I just put the hood on, as you can see, the brake, brake the bunk had to do is suddenly did going up and down, let's see. 2.4 to 3 as we drop below 15 mile an hour. Nice steady. I'll try and stop at the stop board as best I can. There we go. Not bad. I'm not going to complain at that. It's not a bad stop. It's I could have just gone a little bit closer to get. Ideally, you want the cab door, the cab side to be next to the stop board to get the perfect stop. But not bad. It's not a bad looking game, this isn't, to be honest. Obviously, I'm playing it on PS5. Uh, I'm going to take a bit of a screenshot because it's quite nice. It's eerie in the in the night, uh, in the dark, uh, in the darkness. And the, I know it's small, isn't it? How are you supposed to read that? Can't read it, can you? I, should, I don't know if that's true to life or not. Mind you, you do get to some really big uh, places, don't you, at, uh, in Scotland that you have to stop at. Uh, Tommy you off. No. It's like indoors. I'm out of red, so the difficulty is you shouldn't really be locking. It, it's a really difficult one because you shouldn't actually be locking and dispatching on a red, but, you know. Right. Get that breakdown and let's go. So what I could have done if I wanted to try to try be Mr. Vigilant Driver is I could have put my DRA on while I was stuck at the red so it reminded me not to pull the power. Not that it matter because the doors are open. But yeah. Right, 100 mile an hour. Next stop should be Lindsay in just under three mile. I've learnt the names of the stations really quick actually without really, really realising. I knew a few of them anyway. Um, so it's um, Bishop's Brig, Lindsay, Croy, Falkirk, Polmont, Nivnifgo, Edinburgh Park, Haymarket and Edinburgh Waverley. I'm hoping a neutral section comes up so you can see the VCB light. So the VCB light is off, so I assume when it comes on, it's when we're in a neutral section and momentarily you'll have no power. And that is literally where the overhead wire sections are swapping from one section to another. So, so that was the vigilance, so I've just pressed the acknowledge button. Eastfield depots around here somewhere, but I think of you can't really see it in the dark in the dark and the fog. I think what I'm trying to show you here is if you can drive it in the dark and the fog, you can drive it anywhere. Restrictive aspects again. So on the stopping train, you seem to get these restrictive aspects. I guess to slow you down, which is good. But I want to. So let's put the power off. Can't be too close. Oh, right, full brake. Let's see how good the braking is. coming down from 98 miles an hour with just under a mile to the station it's yeah it's slowing down quite gradually there let's just pull the bar bar up a little bit station shouldn't be too far now can't see it in the fog or the dark but so it's probably, it should make something okay 51 mile an hour let's uh, ease off a bit A bit too slow now, I think. Oh no, there it is. Quick, put some brake on. Stop it into the platform. See, there are oh, the stop boards there, look. So yeah, it, it 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 is a bit of a. I've just gone past it this time, so I was trying to. St <laughs> but I'm there, I'm there. So yeah, not complaining too much with that one. At least I've managed to stop on the on the platforms again. Can I? That's really creepy, isn't it? 
Yeah, there's a bit of light to say that the all the doors are open. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty train, to be fair. Times it drew off eight forty nine. Now there's a red signal ahead. Now in theory you can dispatch and draw up to the signal anyway, should it not clear. Um well, they, I don't know. I don't know. It works at a signal off the platform. But we'll, we'll get the door shut. The next stop is Croy, which is where I will have to get off because the train goes forward to Alloway. Alli Alli Green's gone a lot, so... By the way, to do that, so apologies, I didn't explain. To do that, you have to have a keyboard um, to press B. Or if you've got... See, you can't do it on the PS4, but on Xbox and the PC, you can always hover the cursor over the signal button, which is, I'll show you there, which is there, look, that one. But the PS5, the PS4, if you've got a PS4, Xbox, and the PC, and you go with cursor mode, which is when you click on R, the R3, the right stick down, you can move the cursor over signal without having to change, move the camera. But unfortunately, for some reason, the PS5 doesn't, it, the feature doesn't work on the PS5, which is really, really, which is such a shame because we used to like driving like that. So, Croy's just under five miles away, so we can get a bit of a run now, I think. Should be 100 miles now, virtually all the way. So, let's get going. Overall, this is overall this is quite a nice train to drive. If I'm honest, it's it is it's easy once you know how, and it just takes a little bit of getting used to the braking, especially because it's got that regenerative braking, um, and the stick is a little bit because it's more like got although it's got notches, it's not really got proper notches. It's only got intermediate notches, so it's more percentage, just a bit like the javelin, really. So it feels like it's sticking actually, it just needs a bit of force just to get the notch in. But like I say, look how quick it picks up speed, we're doing the 100 mile an hour. It's really, really good. We're still climbing here, and we're still climbing as well, it's quite a good, good climb as well. You can't see it, but there's some really nice hills and things up out, out the windows. Obviously you can't see it at the moment in this foggy dark morning just uh, two and a half 2.5 miles to Croy just uh, got out to 100 mile an hour like I say assuming that's the uh, how, how realistic this train's been been um, set up I mean it does look it just seems quite genuine the route's definitely got potential to have some good scenarios in, especially some retro scenarios. If anyone wants to get a Scott Rail Class 47 in Mark II coaches set up to do the classic, or Mark III. Oh, no, we can't do Mark III yet, can we? That's a shame, because these Mark III's, didn't they? But yeah, it'd be even better if we could do like a retro pack with some Class 27s and Mark I's and Mark II's. That'd be really good, wouldn't it? So we've got two, we've got two yellows coming up there, so that tells me we're approaching uh, Croy. Yep, sound as usual, the typical Unreal Engine sound issues. That's not so much the game, that's the, un the Unreal Engine. It just doesn't like audio at all. Let's put the power off. Oh god. Oh, going too fast. I'm going way too fast. Whether I'm going to stop or not, that's another story. Will I stop? Will I have to use the emergency brake? Oh, emergency brake. Will it stop me though? No. Oh dear. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Oh, it's snowing now. So there you go, now you can see what the braking's like. So that is a good experiment. So, oh, it's snowing now. So I'll leave it at that. 
I'm hoping you've learnt a few things there, and obviously any mistakes you've seen me make, you can then learn from, and I can learn from. So, uh, yeah. I mean, the braking could be degra degraded as well because of the um, the slippery conditions, potentially. I'm not saying that's what's happened because the sander never came on. But I've literally let, probably just braked a bit too late. But it has still come to a stand in a relatively short space of time. So that just shows you. Right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you've learned a bit. And obviously, you know, try not to repeat what I've just done. But, uh, yeah, so I'll leave that there. And uh, hopefully you guys can enjoy this route and take what I've uh, just um, taught you or not. <laughs> take it easy. Bye.